thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Oh, we bless the name of the Lord our God. Good morning. It is an awesome morning, a glorious morning. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, this morning, can you join with me? Oh, good afternoon, um, Senyan, good afternoon. Gloria, good afternoon. Come on, let's lift up our hands this morning, and you know how we do it. Come on, let's magnify God. He is worthy to be praised. If your eye have seen a new day, amen, it's just by His grace. Come on, lift up your hands with me, and let's magnify the name of the Lord our God. Come on, let's do it. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because you are our God. Thank you, Father, for life. Thank you, Lord, for strength. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for understanding. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us unto yourself. Now, Lord, I pray, my God, that as we lift up our voice in worship, that you will abide, you will come, you will sit in our midst, and you will teach us your word. Nothing but your word. Because the Bible declares that you have exalted your word above your name. And let your word have its free course in us to, today in the name of Jesus. Do that which you alone can do in our lives. When all is said and done, We'll be careful to give you the worship. A million thanks this morning. Glory is yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. Wow, it's so good to see you. It is awesome to see you. It is, it is, it's, you know, it's, it's just good to see you. Now, you know my next question. How are you? I want to know how you are doing. How are you? How was your weekend? Okay, how was your weekend? I want to know now. So talk back to me. Oh, good morning from Jamaica. So excited. Good morning from J. Oh, good morning from Sweden. Good evening, Priscilla from Sweden. The Lord bless you, honey. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. I want to know. Good to see you, Audrey. Good to see you, my love. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, Erajua says, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, how are you doing? Um, Yvonne says she's blessed. How are you doing? I want to know how you're doing. Oh, I am I am divinely favored of the living God, blessed by God. Great to be alive. I thank him that he's made me a blessing. I'm really grateful to him. All right. Good morning, honey. Good morning. Awesome. Oh, I am so grateful. Victoria, good morning. Wonderful. 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 Let me know how you're doing. Oh, I like that. I'm overwhelmed with blessings. Ooh, I like. Oh, I like that. She said, "I'm overwhelmed with blessings." Erica, good morning, honey. Good morning, Shan um, Sanchez. Good morning, Araba. Good afternoon. How are you? I want to know how you are doing. Um, I'm concerned, so I really want to know how you are doing. How are you? We bless God. Oh, blessing. The Lord bless you. Blessing says, good morning, woman. Good morning, honey. Oh, Gloria said her weekend was great. It's good to hear. Awesome. Listen, we just have to take time, you know, and uh, remember all that God has done for us. And be grateful to the Lord. Because, listen, if you are like, I'm good, my darling. Thank you. And so... 
oh well it's a public holiday here too somebody said it's a holiday in the uk well it's a holiday here too all right and um we bless god that this morning you've taken the time to tune in and to hear what god has for you is going to be awesome by the grace of god we say it with all humility um the one who is sustaining us is god the one who is keeping us is god and i bless his name for it this morning now can you wait for your turn is what we are looking at can you wait for your turn yeah sometimes it might be the season i want you to listen to me sometimes it may be the season so it is summer season it is winter season it is autumn it is spring back home we have a season we call the hamatan it might be the hamatan season but the thing is is it your turn it might be the season all right but it's not your turn and can you wait for your turn can you wait for your turn in my, listen to me it might be the season yes it's summer season and uh, everybody is you know all over the place because it's summer oh vida good morning because it's summer eugenia good afternoon it is summer and so everybody is enjoying and you know everybody have their summer clothes on you know because it's summer but is it your turn and so now the question is can you wait for your turn can you wait oh can you wait <laughs> Can you wait for your turn? So we are going to look into it. And um, I believe that some of you, um, maybe you have not read that scripture yet. And it's going to give you an aha moment. Like, really? Yes. And that I want you, open up your mind. Open up your heart. I want you to get away from every distraction. There are so much distractions all over the place. Get away from every distraction and say to yourself, I want to hear the, Lord, the word of the Lord because I want to learn. And so listen to me. We are going to learn something. And the question is, can you wait for your turn? It might be the time, but if it's not your turn, you will end up now. If you go to the airport, those of you who travel a lot, okay, including myself, if you go to the airport and um, they tell you, Okay, now, check-in time. Check-in time is for, I mean, for example, it's 4 p.m. Now, so you check in at 4 p.m. And then 4.30, you are sitting in the plane. Okay, now, the pilot can come in and say that even though we are sitting in the plane and... It, we are, you know, it's time for us to take off. But there are five planes ahead of us. Oh, God. There are five planes ahead of us. And so we have to wait for our turn. There are five planes ahead of us. And so we have to wait for our turn. Now, if it, sometimes you may not have a whole bunch of planes ahead of you. But if, oh, Jesus. If, hmm, if. The key word there is if. Now, if the man sitting in the controlling um, tower have not given the clearance and say it is time for you to move, trust me, you'll be sitting in that plane. You can complain all you want. You can fight all you want. You can do... Well... It's not time to take off. And if you make an attempt to go to the cockpit, to go and press buttons, <laughs> to go pressing any buttons, you know your, your, change, your, your living address will change. <laughs> your living address will totally change. If you live in one, two, three, um, 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 maybe um, Samson Avenue, okay, for example. Now, it's not your time, okay? It's not your turn. The, it's not a turn for the plane to take off. And you decide, you are not a pilot, you are not qualified. You decide that I am going to, because I'm in a hurry, 
okay? I am going to go to the cockpit and I'm going to start pressing buttons there. Your address will change. Your address will now be the prison. Because, number one, they will think you are going insane. Why is this? Why did, she, why did he get up to go there? Well, and so this is what we are talking about this week here. Is it, can you wait for your turn? It might be the time, all right, but is it your turn? We are going to look into it. Open your Bible with me to Second Kings. Oh, it's going to be good. Open your Bible with me, Second Kings. Second Kings. Some of us have suffered shipwreck. Some of us have hit and um, have literally, I mean, um, collapsed because the fact that somebody said, it's your time. Somebody said, oh, it's the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. My dad, blessing, your address will change, definitely. Somebody says, it's oh, it's your time. It's your time. It's your time. And so you get up and you start doing stuff. But is it your turn? Because it can be, your, it can be the time. But if it's not your turn, you will, you will hit stuff. Because when it is your turn, everything, God will make sure that he removes everything from the way so that you will appear, you will emerge. And your imagines, my God, you will imagine glory, you will imagine style, you will, re oh my goodness, when it's your turn and you are coming, my God, my God, my God. And I see it when you go to a wedding, okay, and everybody comes in, everybody is sitting because, hey, the time is up, okay, everybody is sitting down. And so they are waiting for the bride to walk in. And so, some my goodness, what kind of a bride is this? This bride is taking too long. I mean, it's taking too long. Then all of a sudden, they announce, it is now the turn of the bride to walk in. When the bride is walking in, guess what happens? Everybody stands up. <laughs> Everybody stands up. There is one person we will look at also in the Bible. And of course, I love David, and his name is David, but that's not what I'm lo we are looking at today. Even though, I mean, he was in the desert all the way there. All his older brothers are in the city, and they are chillaxing, but he was there. When his time and his turn came, the Bible says that now Samuel, Prophet Samuel says, we are not sitting down until he comes. Hey, we are looking into it. Now, open your Bible with me to 2 Kings, okay? Um, chapter 8, we are going to look at a young man by the name Hazel. Hazel, that's what we are looking at. And I know you will be blessed. So, turn your Bible with me. I, I don't want to read the Bible by myself, okay? So, look into the Word with me. Let's do it together. We are looking at a young man by the name Hazel. Now, there, there was a king by the name ben Haddad. Ben Haddad, okay, Ben Haddad. Now, um, Ben Haddad uh, was the um, the king of Syria, and Ben Haddad had um, um, a servant, and the servant's name was Hazel. Now, Ben Haddad now was sick. I'm giving you a background. Then we are going to look into the word of God. That's it, my darling. Uh, ben Haddad was sick. Now, um, in his sickness, in those days, if anything happened. If you no know, any king um, um, is in any kind of trouble, the good ones, they will go and inquire. They will go and inquire from the prophet. Now, prophet in 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 our dispensation um, are different, and I'm not going there. But in those days, um, if a prophet entered into a city, everybody is shaking, okay, because the prophet carries the word of the Lord. It it was either a blessing, a promotion, or a curse. Or judgment and so anytime a prophet entered into a place you know people are shaking they, they, they want to know why the prophet is there now this man the king of Syria Ben Haddad now is sick and so number one um, he sent his servant Hazel to go and inquire from a prophet and so this young man now goes to the prophet on an assignment he was sent by the king but now i want you to look at what happened and it's going to oh also for mommy betty hi my darling good morning good morning woman of god how are you 
Good morning. Oh, Patricia, you're watching from Dubai. The Lord bless you. How is Dubai? I hear Dubai is really beautiful. How is Dubai? Now, I want you to listen to me. Now, look into the word of the Lord with me. Okay? Can you wait? Can you wait for your turn? Now, so 2 Samuel, 2 Kings, sorry, chapter 8. Let's start reading from verse 7. Let's start from there. Okay? Look into your Bible, honey. Pick up your Bible. Look into your Bible. Now, verse 7. I'm reading it in the King James, and then I'll read it in the um, in the New Living Translation or the uh, the Message Bible. Okay, Equia, good morning, honey. All right, and Elisha, look at it, came to Damascus, and been heard that the king of Syria was sick, and it was told him saying, the man of God is come hither. Verse eight, and the king said unto Hazel, take a present. In thy hand, that's that that's one beautiful thing about about God. Okay, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that one. And the king said unto Hazel, "Take a present in thy hand, and go meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? Shall I recover of this disease?" So, verse nine, Hazel went to meet him. And took a present with him. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly what he took. Oh, a fear all the way from, oh, from Ghana. I'm so sorry, my darling. I'm so sorry. Just keep watching. And then um, after, you can watch the whole thing. It will still be um, on my page if you are um, following. It will still be there for you to watch. The devil is a liar. Good morning, Ephia. The devil is a liar. So Hazel verse 9, went to meet him and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, forty camels burdened, and came and stood before him, and said, Thy son, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? Verse 10, And Elisha said unto him, Go, say unto him, Thou mayest, Thou mayest, Certainly recover. How be it? The Lord has showed me that he shall surely die. Now, this is getting kind of interesting. Ben Hadad sent Hazel to go to the prophet Elisha. Elisha, the man that carries a double portion of the anointing of Elijah. Oh God, we are not going there. Now, he sent the servant. The servant goes and he says, Well, my master. The king is sent me to you. He wants to know one number one. Um, he, he asked me to bring you this present. Now, any time I'm saying something to you, any time you are going to your pastor, you are going to a prophet to seek for God's guidance, you don't go with your empty hands. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. Now here, the Bible is teaching us. We have to learn. Because if we say we are children of God and that we are, we are following Christ, then the word of the Lord is God himself. The word of the Lord. We don't just read it, but we have to practice the word of the living God. And so now in those days, when any man, whether it's a king, an ordinary man, whatever, is going before a prophet or a priest, what they do is they go with a present in their hands. It is not because the pastor needs it. It is not because the prophet needs it. No, 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 no. They, they, trust me, because some of these pastors and prophets, they are dangerously rich. I mean, trust me. They don't need it. They don't need anything from you. But, it triggers a blessing. It triggers something in the realms of the spirit. Trust me when I tell you. It triggers. It's, it's more spiritual than physical. Okay? It's more spiritual than physical. And so I'm teaching you something and I want you to learn. Alright, let's go on. And Elisha said unto him, Go say unto him, verse 10, Thou mayest set it, may. That means it's not, it's not a done deal that you are going to be, um, you know, healed. It's, it's not a done deal. So you may 
So it's either you may or you may not. Look at it with me. And Elisha said unto him, Go and say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover. How be it? The Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Well, you may recover, but God has shown me. There is one thing you came asking if the man, and, and this week, oh God, may the Lord help us. We are going to take time and look into it, and it's going to blow your mind. Okay, verse 11. And he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed, and the man of God wept. Look at it with me. Something very strange. It's now going on here. I want you to pay attention to me, please. Hazel is standing in front of Elisha, the man who sees even into the soul of a man. <laughs> the man that hears. It's interesting, sometimes you may stand before a man of God, a woman of God. You may not sometimes stand before them, you may be talking to them. And you think that they don't see what you are doing, what you are saying, how you are acting. Sometimes they, they see through you, but they decide to keep quiet and don't say nothing. I'm teaching you something. And so now listen to me. Hazel is standing right in front of Elisha and Elisha started staring at him. Oh God, we'll look, we'll look at it in a different translation. Okay, we are, reading, we are reading 2 Kings chapter 8. 2 Kings chapter 8. 2 Kings chapter 8. And um, I started reading um, from verse 7. 2 Kings chapter 8. Verse 7, but I've now got into verse 11. Now, Elisha is now looking at the servant that Ben Hadad, ben -Hadad have sent to him. Elisha, now the boy goes, Oh, good morning, my darling Sue. Elisha now, is I want you to imagine it. Let's, let, let's do this. I'm putting myself in the place of Elisha. Okay, so now I am Elisha, and you, whoever you are watching me, okay, um, I mean, God forbid, but Hazel, and you were sent by your master, Ben Haddad. So Ben Haddad sent Hazel to go to Elisha to ask. He was sick. He says, are you going to live? Go and ask Elisha for me. Am I going to live or I'm going to die? Now, so Hazel now goes before Elisha. Elisha said, well, he may, he may recover, but the Lord has shown me. Okay, so now I am um, Elisha and I'm saying, well, um, Hazel, well, yeah, yeah, your master said, come and ask me because I'm a prophet. Your master said, come and ask me if he's going to live or die because he's sick. Okay, now I want you. Um, to go and tell your master, he may live. But, besides the question he asked you to come and tell me, the Lord have told me that he's going to die. Now, all of a sudden, a strange thing is happening here. Now, I begin to set my eye on Hazel. What was I doing? I am seeing beyond Hazel. Hazel is standing right in front of me, a human being. I am looking. I love you too, Jeffrey. I am looking at Hazel. But I am seeing behind Hazel. I am not looking at the physical side of Hazel. I am looking in the spirit. I have now moved from the physical. And I'm now looking into the spirit. And I literally see what Hazel is going to do. Look at it with me. Verse 11 says, and he, he's talking about Elisha. Elisha settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. Elisha kept looking at Hazel. Let me, let me, let me, let me 
say something to you years ago my my oldest daughter oh jesus lord i thank you don't know what to do but to thank you my oldest daughter was in pre-k oh, that was years ago and um pre-kindergarten and um this little boy i don't know what my daughter did to 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 him Apparently, that was what the teacher told me. The guy, this little boy was just staring at my daughter. Then all of a sudden, he just pushed her. I mean, and she went tumbling into the chairs. And um, she, you know, she, she, she held her shoulder and my daughter was screaming, my shoulder, my shoulder, my shoulder. Of course, you know, the attack of the enemy. And so my shoulder, my shoulder, my shoulder. And so... Um, the teacher, you know, panicked and then she was supposed to have, the, by, the, by law, she was supposed to have taken care of my child and then she would call me. But the teacher panicked and she called me because the way she was screaming, the teacher was afraid, so she called me. When the teacher called me, I went to the school and I said, what's the matter? And then she says, my, my daughter, I mean, she was holding her shoulder. She says, mommy, my, my hand, my hand, my She doesn't know the difference between shoulder and I'm pre, pre, no, pre K. So my daughter is crying. I mean, she's crying. Her eyes are so red. And so as a mother, I said, who did this to you? And, um, you know, the teacher said him. I mean, the teacher didn't want to take any responsibility. I mean, I, I, I mean, that was not, you know, Americans would say that was not kosher at all. So the, um, the teacher said him. So now I said, young boy, come. So the boy came and if you ask me, why did you do that? I have no idea. All I did was to stare at him. I was just looking at the boy. I said, you, you pushed my daughter. He was standing there, he wouldn't even answer. So I was just looking at him. I looked at the boy until the boy started crying. I mean, I, trust me, if you ask me, why did you do that? I have no idea why I did it. I was just staring at the boy. I did not say a word. I was just staring at him and the boy was looking at me and he wouldn't blink. And so I was not blinking either. I was just staring at the little boy. I looked at him. All of a sudden, he started crying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So now he goes and he gives my daughter a hug and he says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And the teacher said, what did you do? I said, I don't know. He was looking at me. I was just looking at, looking at him as well. I mean, it was really funny. But this is, this is something similar. The same scenario. Now, Elisha now started staring at, ben ha at um, Hazel. Elisha stared at him until this time, it was not Hazel that was crying. It was Elisha that started crying. Look at it with me. Can you wait for your turn? Look at it with me. And the man of God, let me read the verse 11. What time is it? Okay. And he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. Look at it. The man of God started weeping. Verse 12. And Hazel said, Why weepest my Lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou would do unto the children of Israel. And Hazel is like, Who is he talking to? I only came to ask about my master. Now, you are now looking at me and you are crying. And you are saying that I, Hazel, you see the evil that I, Hazel, will do to the children of Israel. How? I am only a servant. How? Look at it. And Hazel said, Why weepest thou? Verse 12. And he answered, because I know, I know, my God, every child of God, you have to have the spirit of God in the inside of you. My dear, if there is any spirit, if there is anything you will ask for God in this end time, is the spirit of discernment. The spirit of discernment. If there is anything you will ask from God, is the spirit of discernment. Let's read on. Because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. They are strongholds that will set on fire. 
and their young men will thou slay with the sword and will dash their children and rip up their women with child. He says, I can see, I am looking at you, Hazel, and I can see the evil that you, this young man, Hazel, you will do to the children of Israel. You will kill young men with the sword. Not only that, but what you are going to do is this. Women that are pregnant, you are going to cut their bellies and take out their babies. Look, look at verse 13. And Hazel said, but what? Is thy servant a dog? No. He's, look at, look at it. He's looking at Elisha. And he says, Elisha, are you kidding me? Am I a dog? No, listen to me. He says, Elisha, what are you talking about? Am I a dog? Look at it. And Hazel said, but what? Is a servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, this is where the story begins. Look at it with me. And Elisha said, the Lord have showed me that thou shall be king over Syria. You are the servant of Ben Haddad. But the Lord have shown me. Look at it. But the Lord have shown me that you will be king over Syria. Now, even though God is telling me you are going to be king over Syria, but when you become a king, I see the evil that you, you will do to the children of Israel. And the guy said, are you kidding me? Am I a dog? Sometimes. <laughs> you deal with sons and daughters. And sometimes you look at them and you can literally foretell their future. But you keep quiet and you look at them and once in a while, you may say something and they'll think, what is she talking about? Sometimes we see things that you don't see. I have a daughter, by the grace of God, that the Lord is helping me raise. And sometimes I see little things in her life. And to be very honest with you, it scares me. It does. And I'm doing my best and I'm trying my best to bring her to where God wants her to be. Sometimes I feel like, let me just give up because it looks like, it's not it, but it looks like she has this fighting spirit. But the Lord is our helper. Elisha is looking at this young man and saying, wow, I see something. You, this young man, you become the king, all right. But the evil that you will do will beat the minds of people. Now, this young man is looking at himself and saying, mm, look at this crazy young old prophet. This, this, sometimes some of these prophets, my God, some, don't mind this prophet. Look at this old prophet. What is he talking about? I, I think he's, you know, you know, Alzheimer's. He's, you know, he's, you know, this young this old man. Forget about this old man. Now look at it. I'm going somewhere with you. So he departed from Elisha and came to his master. Now Hazel left Elisha and came to his master, Ben Haddad. Look at it. Who said to him, what said Elisha to thee? And he answered, he told me that thou shouldest surely recover. Now, was that the whole truth? Was that the whole story? Uh-uh. Elisha told him that there is a possibility that he's going to survive. Okay? But the Lord has told him, Elisha, that he was going to die. Did the young man say that to the, to the master? No. Did the young man tell the master that Elisha said, well, I am going to be king. And then 
and then this is the evil I am going to do when I become a king. Is that what he said? No. Verse 15, and it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, that he took a thick cloth and dipped it he, Hazel, he, Hazel, and it came to pass, let me read it that way, and it came to pass on the morrow that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it on, on his face so that he died and Hazel reigned in his stead. <laughs> Look at it with me. Hazel now decided, I'm not waiting for my turn. Well, I was just told that the king will die. I don't know when he's going to die. I was just told I will become the king. So, since the guy is already sick, let me kill him quick so that I can sit on the throne because I was just told. I was just told that I will become the king. And so, let me just kill him and let me take the throne. Look at what happens. Oh. Let me read it in the, um, the New Living Translation. Elisha went to Damascus, the capital of Aram, where King ben Hadad lay sick. When someone told the king that the man of God had come, the king said to Hazel, take a gift to the man of God. Then tell him to ask the Lord, will I recover from this illness? So Hazel loaded down 40 camels with the finest product of Damascus as a gift for Elisha. He went to him and said, your servant ben Hadad, the king of Aram, had sent me to ask, will I recover from this illness? Verse 10. And Elisha replied, go and tell him, you will surely recover, but actually, the Lord has shown me that he will surely die. Verse 11. Elisha stared at Hazel with a fixed gaze until Hazel became uneasy. Then the man of God started weeping. Verse 12. What's the matter, my Lord? Hazel asked him. Elisha replied, I know the terrible things you will do to the people of Israel. You will burn their fortified city, kill their young men with the sword, dash their little children to the ground, and rip open their pregnant women. Hazel responded, What could a nobody like me ever accomplish such great thing? Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you are going to be the king of Aram. When Hazel left Elisha and went back, the king asked him, what did Elisha tell you? And Hazel replied, he told me that you will surely recover. But the next day, Hazel took a blanket, soaked it in water, and held it over the king's face until he died. Then Hazel became the next king of Aram. Now, I'm stopping there and we will continue later. Hazel have no idea that he was next in line for the throne. Mm. There are a whole bunch of servants that are killing their masters. Listen to me. Hazel, I believe that Ben Hadad or Ben Hadad saw Hazel as a faithful servant. And Hazel, I believe, that have done so much good, you know, in helping the king. And I believe that the king trusted him. Oh, the king trusted him. Because if the king did not trust him, the king will not send him to the prophet. In other words, the king literally put his life in the hands of Hazel. The king. In every kingdom, I don't believe there is only one servant. There are different kinds of servants. There are the servant that works in the garden. There are servants that works in the kitchen. 
there are servants that um, serves the king food. The, the, the servants in the kitchen are not the same servant that serve the king food. There are servants that wait on the king when the king have guests that they come and they serve. There are different kinds of servants. There are servants that have the opportunity to enter into the king's chambers. There are servants that have the opportunity. And I believe that even among the servants that enters into the king's chambers, there are some that were very close, very, very close to the king. Extremely close to the king. And so I believe that ben Hada, uh, that Hazel was one of those people. Because it looks like the king trusted him so much that the king could send him to a major prophet. Is there also a possibility that the king saw something in Hazel that Hazel himself did not see? And so the king knew, knew that if I send him to the major prophet, Elisha, Elisha could see maybe what the king has seen that he's not sure of. And so now, he sends Hazel. When Hazel just asked Hazel head this thing, first, he says, um, I see that you, this is what you will do to the children of Israel. You will kill their men with the sword. The young men you will destroy. Pregnant women, women that are pregnant, you will literally open their bellies and take out the babies. You are going to turn yourself into, into a doctor and literally take, I mean, do, do C-session and take the babies from their belly. The man says, are you kidding me? Who do you think I am? A wicked man? How am I going to do that? And just as Elisha said, because the Lord has told me, you are going to become a king. The guy said, bingo. Bingo. So all this while, did the king know that I was next in line? Probably, and we are going to look at it because of our time. Is there a possibility that this man, Hazel, was a nobody. He was not even connected to the lineage of King Ben Haddad. But you see, a servant that was positioned in the realms of the spirit to take the throne, but his intentions were dangerous and diabolical. It is a possibility that he himself had no idea that the day was coming he was going to be the king. And so now, just as a major prophet have declared with his mouth that you are going to be the king, he says, bingo. Now, I don't know when this man is going to die. I don't know when. Let me finish him before maybe he turns his face to the wall like Hezekiah and start crying to God, and God will give him 15 more years, and then I will have to wait for 15 more years to sit on the throne. The guy said, I will finish you in no time. And so, he picks up a blanket, and I can just imagine the king sees this young man coming back in, and he says, Hazel, I believe he bowed down to himself. Yes, my Lord. You came back already? Yes, my Lord. What? Listen, it is not everybody who is bowing down to you have a good intention, let me tell you. Ha <laughs> ha, let me tell you. And so, did you see the king? Yes, my Lord. Did you see the prophet? Yes, my Lord. What is he saying? He says that you will recover. Oh, wow. I thank God. I thank God. You finally, I bless God for whoever came to tell me that Elisha was in town. I wouldn't have known he was in town. But thank God for good people that comes and tells me where to get help. This scripture here is big. We are going to look at it from different angles. 
Because somebody came to tell ben Haddad that Elisha was in town. And so there is always a one person that will tell you where to go to get help. It is not everybody that they know that, that this, listen, if you go to this woman, if you go to this man, your life will turn around. It is not everybody. It is only a few people that know that my goodness, the solution, what you are looking for is in the hands of this woman. What you are looking for is in the mouth of this woman. What you are looking for, it is in the mouth of this man. If this woman or this man lift up his voice or her voice and say, may heaven arise on your behalf, heaven will arise on your behalf. It is only a few people that can direct you to the right source. And so whoever this person is, is so interesting that this person played an important role in the life of the king, but the Bible does not record his name. Who was that person? We will look at it in many angles. Who was that person? Because the Bible says, somebody came and told the king that Elisha was in town. And the king did not get anybody, but they trusted somebody. He trusted Hazel. The king trusted Hazel with everything in him. He says, go to Elijah. He could have sent anybody. Why him? And that is the question. He could have sent anybody, but why him? He sent him because he trusted him. And so now, look at it. When he went and the, and the prophet said, Okay, now, he may, he may recover. But God has told me that he will die. How? Why? Because Elisha saw that right after Hazel leaves his presence, he knew what Hazel was going to do. It was not a secret to Elisha. Elisha knew it. Because the whole thing, spiritually, was playing right in front of Elisha. Elisha saw it. Oh, he knew it. Elisha knew it. But Elisha kept his mouth. Somebody will say, why? Elisha. You know why? Elisha was giving that young man. Elisha could have shut up and don't even tell that young man that I know what you're about to do. But Elisha told him, Elisha, I believe, was thinking and wishing and praying that this young man will have a good heart. And then we'll probably look at Elisha and say, my God, if this is what you see my future, help me because I don't want to go that route. But just as Elisha told the young man, he says, okay, bye. I'm going to go to my master and tell him what you said. And just like, Elisha was still waiting for the young man to have a change of heart. But the young man have heard something. Hey! Hi! They said I'll be the next king. Woohoo! Let me go and kill him. Let me say something to you. Leave your master into God's hand. Trust me when I tell you. Leave your master. They may be wicked. They may be hard. They may be harsh. They may be whatever. Leave your master. Trust me when I tell you. Leave your master into God's hands. Don't touch them. Don't talk about them. Don't do anything. Leave them. Trust me, my darling. Leave them into God's hands. God knows how to deal with your master and my master. Leave them. Wash your hands. As long as God sees that your hands are clean, ha <laughs> ha, and your heart is clean. 
leave them into God's hands. Hazel, th there is more, I'm telling you. And we are going to look on both sides. Because it's the first day of the week. I am taking it so easy. But trust me, can you wait for your turn? Can you wait for your turn? It may be the time, but it may not be your turn. Can you wait for your turn? I want us to look at the scripture. And I'm going to let it go. You know, I didn't go really, really deep. I, this one is a, a, a shallow sh bath. But God's willing, if the Lord opens the doors of life unto us, we'll begin to go deeper and you will have an aha moment. The reason why I believe that the Lord sent me this way is because there are millions of people out there that God is waiting on them to make a U-turn and that he will use them to accomplish his purpose here on earth. Look at something with me. <sighs> Lamentations. Some of you have never You don't you have never heard of lamentations in the Bible. Lamentations. Chapter 3 verse 25. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. The Lord is good unto them that wait. <laughs> waiting doesn't mean that sit down and cross your leg and say, well, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. No. Your waiting is you, even though you are waiting on God, but you are making movement. You are not rushing, but you are making movement. I'm waiting on God to open that door. Now, if God has given you a gift, the Bible says that a man's gift will bring him before great men, will make room. A man's gift will make room and will bring him before great men. So you have a gift. Yes, God has given you a gift. Maybe, for example, your gift is to take, um, you see a wood, okay, just a wood, and everybody is throwing that wood into, a fi into fire because they want to burn it. They need heat, so they want to burn it. But you look at that wood and you say, ah, out of this wood, I can get a beautiful, uh, maybe, a, you know, um, 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 I, can, I, can, I can, you know, chip this wood and make it into a beautiful object. My God. And I'm looking at it and somebody sees it as just a wood and they pick it up and they throw it away. But you pick it up. And so once you are waiting for your gift, you are waiting on God to bring you before great men. You are working, for example, if this is the wood, you are working on the wood and you are waiting for God to bring you to where he wants you to be. And so you are waiting, you are working on the, on the, on the, on the wood. People, somebody sees it and throws it into, into the fire. But you pick it up. You say, wow, this thing can be used. Maybe um, um, to make a, um, a wonderful, you know, it, it looks like I can, I can do. So you are, wait, you are waiting on God to bring you before great men. But you are working on the wood. Little, 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 little. Now all of a sudden, you take the same wood that was belonged to somebody and the person wanted to throw it out. And you say, can I have it? He said, ah, take it. It's nothing. Now, you take it to the same person and you said, do you see this is nice? So, oh my God, what? whoa, this is nice. Can I buy it? And then you say, well, yeah, you can buy it, but I'm selling it. it says, how much? My God, this, this piece of art is, what is good. I want it. How much is it? Well, it's $3,000. The person have no idea that what he or she was going to throw out. You took it. And as you are waiting on God to bring you to where he wants you to be, in your waiting, you were working on it. Now, say three thousand dollars. The guy says, "My God, three thousand dollars." Says, "Yes, three thousand dollars." And so the guy now goes and brings you check, takes his check and signs three thousand dollars and give to you. The guy have no idea that the thing he was going to throw out 
okay? You took it and you made something beautiful out of it. You sold it for $3,000. Now, somebody comes, maybe the guy is rich, okay? Somebody comes to the guy's house and sees this and says, Oh my God, what a piece of art. Who did this? Says, oh, I bought it from, you know, one, one guy who lives, you know, here. How much was it? And then the person says, I bought it for $3,000. He says, oh, no, 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 no. This is worth more than $3,000. This is worth, my God, like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Listen, do you have his number? Listen, the guy doesn't even have a phone. Doesn't have a phone. Well, can somebody call him for me? Yes. So now they go and they call the guy. The guy comes and he's looking tatted. He says, are you the one who made this thing? He said, yeah. Really? He said, yeah, yeah. Can you make one for me? He says, yes. He says, okay. Now, take $5,000. Make me one. Okay? So the guy takes the $5,000, goes and look for a cheap wood. Like the same thing. Like she picked up from the same woman, but the guy is zipping up his mouth. And is not saying that the thing you, want, you wanted to throw out, I took it and I did this out of it. So the guy keeps quiet. Now, the guy now makes the thing. And the person, the next person, gives him like $15,000. Somebody else sees it. Meanwhile, he's still working whilst he's waiting for his turn. Oh, my God. He's waiting for his turn. Even though, you know, he's working on it and five people come, ten people come, and he's, he's doing the same thing. But as he keeps selling it, the money is increasing. So now he sells it and the money is increasing, increasing, until one day there is an exhibition. And they are looking for people to bring their artwork. Now, guess what? Somebody recommends that, oh my God, there is this, this man and he can do this. And they recommend and they tell the guy, we want you to do something unique and bring. Okay? Now, he brings it. The other day on the news, oh my God, I had a shock. On the news, if you see this artwork, it's like a little baby just picked up paint. And just painted something. And they were selling that. That to me, it was like, what kind of a thing is this? They were selling that thing for $3.5 million. I mean, this, this, to me, because I don't have, you know, the, the eyes for maybe art. I was like, what is this thing that looks like a little baby just to paint and, you know, just scramble something on the board? $3.5 million on the news. And I was like, are you kidding me? That thing? Yeah. Because I don't have eyes to see. Art. To me, it's nothing. But to somebody, it's a serious treasure. And so now, they bring the guy. They said, listen, this is what we want you to do. So now the guy goes and picks up a very cheap wood. But now, because he's done it for a while, now... His ability is now sharpened. His giftings are now sharpened. And so he does something extraordinary above that which he has already done for 10 people. Now he takes it there. I'm saying something to you. All this while, it was the time he was making it. He was waiting on God, but it was not his turn. When his turn came, now billions of people around the world are now looking at the thing he made out of nothing. Billions of people. Now, because now, God now sees that it was time, but it was not his turn. Now, God says, it is now your turn. So now his turn is now in the front or his turn is now in the eyes of billions of people around the world. It was his time, but it was not his turn. This week here, I pray for you that you will not rush. It may be the time, yeah, but is it your turn? Hazel, I said it. We are going to look at it in different angles. Who was the man that came to tell Ben-Hadad 
that Elisha was in town. Who was he? It also means that whoever came to tell Elisha, the king, Ben Hadad, that Elisha was in town, the person also have a heart for the king. Because if not, he wouldn't have come. Where does this, this man come from? Who was this man? He wouldn't have come. And so, around every one of us, we have good people who have us in their heart. And there are people who are around us pretending they are for us, but they are against us. They are pretending they are for us. I've shared this with you. It is us Christians that don't, don't have time. We want everything snappy. Do it quick, do it quick, quick, quick. But in the realms of the spirit, trust me, trust me, they have time. The enemy can assign one person into your life. And that one person is to bring you down. And trust me, that one person can hang around you for years. For years. Just to fulfill one assignment. And when that one assignment is fulfilled, if God does not help you, you will not be able to lift up your head. Can you wait for your turn? That's what we are looking at this week. Don't miss one day. Get yourself ready. The Lord bless. Let's pray. We're going to continue. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity you've given unto us to be on this platform to hear your word. I am asking, oh God, that this week you will remove anything that has covered our spiritual eyes. That is not causing us to see the way you want us to see. Remove it, Lord. Every cobweb, remove it from our eyes. Every scale, remove it, Lord, that we may see the way you want us to see. Because there are so many things around us. And the things around us is killing us, is destroying us. The things around us, yes, the person that is around us has become an informant. And they are in our lives to look at the loopholes. And they will report it to the demonic and the satanic world. They are around us. But Lord, because our eyes are closed, we are not seeing them. Open our spiritual eyes, Jehovah. Oh God, may we never walk blindly anymore. May the light, the glory light of Jesus shine forth in our spiritual lenses. In the name of Jesus. We give you honor and glory. What do we say to you? Thank you. Kala zomehede. Bradi faragado shti mrante mahabado zima lagadia. Zazavaya karu ili mato barandi azegede grando shte. Peka faragado minimi iba doru akate mahande. Father, do that which you alone can do. Open our eyes. May nothing take us by surprise in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. For we are surrounded by many. Yes, we are. But there are some that have sneaked in and their purpose is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Give us life, Lord, and give it to us in abundance. To you, we bow in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, <laughs> if you are watching me and um, oh I feel God's presence I tell you I really do I, I, I do I, I seriously feel God's presence my, my hands are hot I really feel God's presence this morning and I bless God for your lives and I honor him for what he's doing Oh, I honor him for what he's doing in your life as well if you are watching me and you have not given your life to Jesus, uh, you have not confessed him openly, my God. Thank you, Lord. You have not confessed him openly as your Lord and your personal, Jesus, as your Lord and your personal Savior. Um, I want you to, whew, I want you to um, consider um, taking him as your Lord and, and your personal, and your personal Savior and uh, 
I know that your life will never be the same. If you have not do it, if you have not who accepted him, lift up your hand with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord over my life. Forgive me of every sin and uh, take me, uh, my God, erase my name from the book of death and hell and write my name in the book of life in Jesus' name. If you pray this prayer, because we are scattered all over the world, people are watching me from all over the world, um, I want you um, to um, look for prayerfully, consider, look for a Bible-believing church, and then I want you to go to church and uh, plug yourself in, okay? Plug yourself in and let the Lord do what he has promised to do in your life. And I know your life will be blessed in the name of the Lord, the Son of the living God. Now, listen to me. Um, the Lord put on my heart to start um, this thing, the Abigail Revolution, the Abigail Revolution, um, gathering women from across the globe, um, women that need help. I'm not talking, if you don't need help, you're not the one I'm talking to. I am talking to women that need help, um, you know, in their marriages, in their lives, in their businesses, raising their children, uh, in their relationship. Those are the women I am looking for. And I believe that in this time, God wants me um, whatever he has taught me over the years, um, like I always say, I gave my life to Jesus in 1983. Some of you were not born. And all these years, what the Lord has taught me all these years, I believe it's 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 my turn. <laughs> uh, people have emptied themselves into me all these years. All these years. Yesterday, I, I went visiting, um, you know, um, my my father's church. And um, it was it was it was awesome. I mean, it was awesome. Uh, and um, you know, one one of um, the great men of God that literally helped raise me up. He helped raise me up when I became a born again Christian. Um, Elijah Saforo, Bishop Elijah Saforo. Um, yesterday was in service, and my God, we had a good time. It was good to sit under his ministry again and receive from him, and it was a blessing. It was it was a dangerous blessing, and I bless God for his life as well. I, I I got one more touch from my father, the one who literally helped raise me up again. And so I bless God for everything. Now, every one of us needs somebody. And so make sure that when God connects you to people, make sure that you, you take what God sent you into their life to take. Okay? Make sure. Be wise, very wise. And um, position yourself very well and learn. And so now, all over the years, I've learned from great women of God. And I'm not going to sit here and mention names. Okay, I've learned from great men and women of God. I am a learner. Trust me, I'm not stupid at all. I am a learner. I've learned a lot. And so what God has invested in me through many vessels, okay, it is time for me to also now pour into you what I have learned all these years. And so if you are, if you are one person who you need, you don't need help. You are not the one I'm talking to. Oh, thank you. I get all the... Mwah, 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 mwah. I give it back to you. If you, are, if you you don't need help, you are not the one I'm talking to. Somebody who will come and, you know, come and lift up. You are not the one I'm talking to. I'm talking about people who need help. Now, I want you to go on my website. Okay? My website. SylviaBlessings.org SylviaBlessings.org And then you see it there. Abigail Revolution. Click on that. On the picture, Abigail Revolution, there is a... A spot that says register it's free just click on it and then just put give me your name and your email address that's all I'm asking for and uh, because I don't want to be going back and forth okay so I'm believing God for this month this month is of May is almost gone and so the beginning of June we are going to start it's going to be once a week once a week so I am going to gather those that have given you no know, I mean I've registered those are the people I'm going to get myself in. I'm going to get, you know, um, uh, make sure I, I connect you. We'll be on a platform and uh, you can literally hear my voice. And uh, we are going to interact. If you have any question, you are going to ask. Okay. And then by the grace of God, we'll use scripture. We are not doing anything outside God's word. We'll use the word of the Lord to bring, um, you know, answers to whatever need. You have and so go on my website soviablessings.org and register okay it's there just register um i see um you know some some of the um brothers are like that's not fair you know uh, but, but god is good <laughs> god is good you can never be it's 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 only in america 
you know, where a man can also be called a big girl. I mean, it's <laughs> it's only in America a man can be called a big girl. Okay. Now, so we are we are not we are not doing that. All right. So we are going by. Oh, I I'm telling you, I really feel God. I'm I, I'm telling you, I really feel His presence this morning, and so we bless Him for that. And um, let's do it to the glory of the Lord. The Lord bless you, and may the Lord do that which He has promised um to do in your life. Now, you are in the hands of God. In God's hands, there is protection. There is provision, there is mercy, there is grace, there is compassion. In God's hands is long life. In God's hands is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. In the hands of God. Outside God's hands is nothing but tribulation and premature death. And every, every bad thing that you can think of is outside of God's hands. Don't be in a rush to get out of God's hands. Stay there because in His hands. It's all that, all that you want to be and you hope to be, it's in his hands. The Lord bless you. I love you with the love of the living God. Until I see you, when I see you, know that you are in God's hands. And um, I know that he who has begun a good work in you, <laughs> Matilda, I receive the blessing. I receive the blessing. He who has begun a good work in you has what it takes to bring you to an expected end. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Go with this scripture. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul. That seeketh him. The New Living Translation says, The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. Those who depend on him. He's good to those who depend on him and those who search for him. Depend on God, search for him, and he will give you your heart desire. I love you until I see you when I see you. The Lord bless and I love you. Bye-bye, everybody.